Hey guys, my name is Alex and this is another video about reselling books. I'm recording this at basically the same time that I recorded the previous video, but I changed my shirt so that you won't know. What I wanted to talk about, and what I wanted to talk about in the previous video, but I got carried away riffing about other things, is the embarrassing shit that I'm selling on eBay from my personal collection. It's just four items of like many items, and if you looked in the eBay store prior to this video, you will have seen what they are. They are four items pertaining to the writer Norman Mailer. And when I was in high school, I was obsessed for a brief period with Norman Mailer. But similar to what I was saying about Fran Lebowitz in the previous video, where it's like she and Gore Vidal and Zadie Smith are these writers whose persona I very much like, and I look them up all the time, I devour all of their interviews, I play their voice while I'm doing chores. I just can't get into their work. And when I was in high school, Norman Mailer was considered like one of these authors who was on a sort of lingering post-war Rushmore of like American novelists. It was a group of writers that David Foster Wallace went on to refer to as the GMNs, the great male narcissists. It was Mailer, Roth, Updike, maybe Vidal is up there. Part of the reason I was so into Norman Mailer is because he talked all the time about being an author and what a novelist does and what is the purpose of the novelist, what is the value of the novelist. And I was an aspiring novelist, so that was like really, like that was the kind of thing I wanted to be hearing. But every time I picked up one of Norman Norman Mailer's books, I would try to read it, and I couldn't make my way in. But because he obviously existed on this literary Rushmore, I was of the opinion that, like, I, as a, as a reader, must be somehow deficient. It's the kind of thing that comes to mind, like, if you were to take a stab at reading War and Peace, and you got ten pages into it, and you were like, this is way over my head, I'm not enjoying this, and the, the fact that I'm not enjoying this is obviously a reflection of some issue with me as a reader. If such a diverse, huge spectrum of readers across continents, across generations, have agreed that War and Peace, this incredibly demanding work of fiction, is also incredibly worthwhile and incredibly rewarding, and here I am 20 pages deep and I don't get it. It must be a sign that, like, I, as a reader, have to broaden my, my, my horizons. I have to be more patient with it, I have to give it the benefit of the doubt, I have to try to meet this book halfway. I have to rise to the occasion of the author. That's what you're supposed to feel when it comes to classics. That's what Norman Mailer wanted you to feel if you didn't like one of his books. But because 2023 is the centenary of Norman Mailer, I decided to give his work another shot. And now, at the age of 31, I am no longer an incredibly impressionable 16-year-old. And I have come to the startling conclusion that it's horrible. Everything he writes is kind of horrible. Or not everything he writes. I haven't read everything, but everything that I'm tackling is just unreadable. And this sounds very reductive, and it's some, it's the kind of insult that was lobbed at him a lot in the 60s and 70s, an insult that was lobbed against Philip Roth and John Updike so often that it came to sound meaningless. But in this, like, reevaluation, this reassessment of his work, I'm finding it to be kind of true, which is that it's all, all, a lot of this is about his penis. So I have this, what I, I'm pretty sure is the first edi edition of his work, which I don't think is any longer in print, is one of his most controversial books. It's called The Prisoner of Sex. And I read about 50 pages of it, and I finally, sort of intellectually, I feel that I'm up to the occasion in the way that I did not when I bought this at like a book fair in college, because yes, the Norman Mailer fascination trickled it was a non-literary fascination, and it trickled from early, late high school into early college. To describe this book, like, the word that keeps coming to mind is not a word that I, I want to use lightly, and I mean it very sincerely, and I think I would only apply it to a writer who has, who occupies such stature of reputation, and the word is embarrassing. Like, you can, you can say that it's repugnant, or you can say that it's chauvinistic, and it is definitely those things. But I also think we're kind of in a moment where that kind of discourse, where you're challenging the moral character of the author, it sounds like you're politicizing the material, and you're not sort of look, you're not evaluating it on a page-by-page, sentence-by-sentence basis. But when you do, assess this on a page by page, sentence by sentence basis, it, it, it reeks of an author who cannot, feel, like almost literally cannot comprehend that you would not be fascinated in everything about him. But this is just so shockingly bad. And the other thing here, like there's four things, but this is okay to give you an idea of <laughs> how toxic this um, little obsession of mine was as a teenager. 
I got on eBay as a kid, as a 16 year old, this VHS of like an obscure BBC documentary called Profile of a Writer. I think it was part of a series, but they did this thing where Norman Mailer just like stands in his house and he just like pontificates and pontificates and talks about marijuana and the importance of the writer and the writer's soul. What I was trying to say in my usual incoherent fashion in the prisoner of sex. It's so cringy. It's so bad. It's so bad. And I remember even in the, like the peak of my Norman Mailer fucking adoration, I watched this and like fast forwarded certain parts, not because I was uninterested, but because it was like physically painful. Anyways. Okay. So I've got this VHS and I'm fucking selling it. I'm selling it on eBay. And because it's a, it's a little obscure, right? I don't think this is on YouTube. I, I think it will end up there very soon, just like the video of our births. But yeah, because I think if someone is out there who's a really diehard Norman Mailer fan, or not a Norman Mailer fan, and I don't begrudge you if you are one, but maybe you just regard him as a curio at this point, as I certainly do. I just read the little 250-page uh, biography that came out about him. I think it's called Tough Guy. It's enjoyable. I don't. It does seem like nobody who reads Norman Mailer anymore is actually. It actually buys into the persona that he was affecting. Anyways, again, obscure-ish, and if you're, someone might be really interested in it, so I'm gonna list this for like a whopping $10. Prisoner of Sex, I think because it's like a hard cover and it's got the dust jacket, it's in good shape, and it's a first edition, I'm gonna put it up there, like five, I don't know, man, uh, 12? Thank God I don't own a bookstore. Like I've read Ann Patchett writing about, you know, it's so enchanting, owning a bookstore and being a business owner and living in that milieu. Larry McMurtry has said some very like, just heartened things about what it was like to own his bookstore. I cannot do that. Maybe I'm also destined for failure in this little eBay venture, but uh, yeah, if you want either of those things, there's an auction going on. The next one, I'm, I'm recording this from Miami Beach, though for most of my life up until like three months ago, I've lived on the Miami mainland, and this is Norman Mailer's Miami and the Siege of Chicago. This is about the 1968 Republican National Convention, which was held down here. And again, I think I got, this is about a few weeks ago, I got up to page 35, and it's like, I've got a few like little annotations and shit, but this was also unreadable. There's some interesting things here and there where he describes aspects of Miami, the fact that it it was a swamp when it was like kind of domesticated, and it is still a swamp, something that is constantly trying to overheat and burst out through the pavement. But again, maybe this is the kind of author where you really have to give them a chance to build up their momentum, and maybe by page 100, I would have fallen in love with this, but uh, so again, as I mentioned in the last video, like when you're selling a book, you kind of don't want to, you want it to be a single digit price, but also you have to give free shipping or no one's going to get it. So I'm going to sell this, I guess, for like eight. This is the only one I'm going to charge like 20 bucks for because it's like library protected. And my understanding is that it's actually a pretty good one. And it is of a fire on the moon. This is Norman Mailer's I think it was the early 70s. It was about the moonshot. Norman Mailer started out at MIT studying engineering, and so he applied those skills toward understanding like how the rocket works and how NASA was really performing this huge feat. But again, it's like 400 pages. Uh, it's very dense. He writes prose in columns. It's in good condition, and it's a former library book, so I feel like this is a really beautiful display. Like just that sort of crimson, yeah, blood orange color and the library thing, which is from the days of yore. It says the date due is September 26, 2008, because that's when I checked it out from my high school library and um, uh, <laughs> never returned it. So this is my very embarrassing collection of Norman Mailer stuff, which I am now comfortably relinquishing out into the world. And do I think that in 2023, I might end up giving him another chance? Yes, I do, because I also back there have a huge first edition of his big CIA novel, Harlot's Ghost, which came out in 1991, the year I was born. And as I mentioned, I wrote a book, I, my agent has it out on submission to publishers right now. And while that is in submission, I am editing the first draft of the second volume. It is a projected trilogy, and the third one has a lot to do with like national intelligence and, and security issues. And so I do think that'll be an informative read. Anyways, 
the link to the eBay store where you can get this stuff if for some godless reason you want it is available down in the description as is a link to the podcast where I discuss some of this stuff. Once again, thank you so much for listening and I will talk to you next time.